As always, it is not just a pleasure, but it's actually an honor to be here. Be here as a member of that community that already 15 years ago started working. It is not just an honor, but actually over the first years, when it all started, this practice of universal jurisdiction, when it all started here, for us in Germany, when I say us, I mean a small group of people trying to fight impunity in Argentina. For us, it was paramount to have support. Support from colleagues such as Mr. Lapoy or Mr. Gasses, because we had no previous experience. And it was very important for us. It was quite a momentum for that kind of, 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 a, of a struggle all over Europe. And it is not just that we kept prosecuting Medellas and Pinochet's cases all over the world, but for us, especially all those lawyers that had been active in the struggle, from the very beginning it was clear to all of us that this would be an inconsistent legal practice, that it would be unfair if it is only aiming perpetrators coming from the south, coming from former colonies, which was also one of, of, of the criticism in, win, in left wing parties in the US. But for us, it is always clear that we will not allow for a double standard. not for universal justice and not for international criminal justice either. And that is why in Germany so far we keep moving forward Medellas and, and Pinochet's causes, but cases, sorry, but to give it a name we've decided we want to move from Pinochet to Ramsville. We want to, from Medela to Mercedes-Benz or Nestle. Actually, 15 unionists went missing from a, a Mercedes uh, uh, plant and it, they were in cahoots with the board, the perpetrators, I mean. And this is something they are looking into together with company, with colleagues from Colombia, with a group there, because there has been a bunch of unionists that were murdered in cooperation with Nestle. And out of those troublesome experiences, out of those real experiences in Argentinian cases where we see that uh, Germany is requesting dissolution of Gemera and Vizera, which is a small success for us. And we felt that we had it in us to start also cases against Guantanamo. And so in Germany, we've started with the support of the Center for Constitutional Rights in, in New York. We've lodged a complaint based on the principle of universal jurisdiction that was back in 2004, another one then in 2006, another one in 2007, that one in France. We've had a formal success, but we had no legal success, which is one of my conclusions after 10 years fighting against torture against Guantanamo or impunity, for example, in Guantanamo. So we need to accept that we're taking baby steps, sometimes not so short steps or baby steps. Back in 2004, it was very important to, to make it known the systematic phenomena of torture in Abu Ghraib and, and Iraq, and then in Guantanamo as well, because that was the basis for all the next steps. And one of the next steps was the starting of a case against Guantanamo here in Spain in 2009. It was brought by uh, Gonzalo Bouillet, a lawyer here in Spain. 
And I don't want to go into detail of all those charges because sometimes they are difficult to understand even for ourselves. But at the very beginning, it, it was uh, split it into two parts. Book six, I think this is a uh, six people, legislators or uh, legal experts working with Bush, trying to justify torture or the practice of torture in a semi paralegal way. And do you buy the, well, they were those. And in Gonzalo's claim, there was quite a, a number of uh, evidence. And then, Initially, it was thought to charge them individually, but uh, somehow it was also to show to the legal community all over the world that no exception is made to the uh, absolute prohibition against torture. This was also a contribution to the legal discussion. And I think we had some success since a large deal of the community in Europe did not know many of the details uh, about things that were going on in the U.S. This was uh, the first claim, Bush's uh, six, and the second one is the Guantanamo case. What happened to the first claim, Bush's claim? Uh, well, uh, it was dealt with uh, in a way that it's difficult to explain no. to be honest to be to be very honest in this kind of panels I, I find it difficult to be disciplined and not bitch so much as in all other cases that I mentioned they sent letters of request to the US and had quite a significant reply, response rather. It went on for years, that's the first, and then they said, yes, we, ha we could look into those claims, but they don't say they are looking into those claims. Still, it is enough to terminate it. Well, we've lodged an appeal, we've sent uh, a claim to the Constitutional Court in Spain, and it's a pending case so far. The second example, it's um, well, a bit more successful because it was discussed uh, or treated by, by Baltasar before he was suspended. Let, let me summarize it. He started investigating and talking to first witnesses, and back then, when WikiLeaks cases started, and there were a few prosecutors in Spain who were in touch with the U.S. Embassy and U.S. people, they were worried about this claim. And according to rumors, they referred to, uh, to Garzón's role in it, they wanted it, him out of, of the claim, and this was the case in the end. So the claim stayed in the hands of uh, Judge uh, Justice Ruth, and from 2010-2014, not not much was going on. And I think, well, we we could be honest and say not much happened. But what's more important for us is 
And the thing is that the claim made it, it survived, same as other claims that are of the same nature, where we have Spanish nationals, or Belgian nationals, or French nationals in their respective countries, did all filed uh, a claim. These procedures are long-lasting, time-consuming, and not much happens. Those this, this people who are impatient in a bad way, because you need to be impatient, but in, in a good way, that's what we, you should do. So why? Why did they do it? For 10 years now, they are trying to slow down this kind of, of, kind of claims, and they haven't succeeded. But for some proceedings in Belgium or France or Spain. But let me give you three examples of why these struggle has been useful over the last 10 years. First, we have investigations for extraordinary rendition here in, in Spain. They started here in Spain, first uh, by authorities in Mallorca, because the abducting crews landed in Mallorca. And they tried to, to look into the CIA agents that uh, landed in Mallorca. There was no formal charges brought. Uh, there, were no, there was no sentence, but there were evidences. There was evidence, which was important for other trials, such as in Germany. Khaled de Mastri's claim, in that case, they issued over 10 arrest warrants against CIA agents involved in, in his abduction. And German people, they, they were not capable of reaching the names. They could not find the names without the cooperation of Spanish people. The same happened in Italy after Abu Ismail's abduction. So they issued they produced arrest warrants, and there there were some sentences against Italian agents, but U.S. agents as well, which, by the way, for all of these who say that fighting the powerful makes no sense, well, listen, you see that you had CIA experts discussing that maybe 500 agents should not travel to Europe because they are exposed to detention, to arrest. And I know about this woman who had been an active part in the abduction of one of these people, and she was to be promoted in London to become chief at the agency in London. And they said, OK, you better not come to London, because I would be forced to arrest you, since there is an arrest warrant issued from Germany, covering all over all, over, all Europe. This is interesting. It's an interesting step, because I think it is about us training ourselves, being the fighting kind. Even if success does not happen as we expected, but also for the legal community, where it seems that, well, if there is no formal sentence, it makes no sense. That's what they think. It is just a, a play, an act. But in line with this, back in 2011, we heard how former President Bush, who is now just a private person, wanted to go to Switzerland. Uh, for a speech or a conference or wherever. No, 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 he's not that interesting, actually. And with all the documents that we have uh, gathered over the years, we've lodged uh, a claim 
against a bush and so he could not fly to Switzerland. Again, you might argue, okay, well, not traveling now? What, what does it mean? What does it add? Well, I think those are significant steps. We need to keep moving forward and still we need to accept that we've even made some achievements against US people. Third argument here. A decision by the prosecutor, by, by the representative, sorry, of the National Criminal Court after filing a claim against the British leading team for systematic torture between 2003-2008 in Iraq. And Representative Luis Moreno Campo back in 2006 decided not to start a case, not to start a claim. And so in January we ask for the restarting, reinitiation of this claim and last week they decided to have an interim review against the British leading team. And these are six, uh, the examples that prove that I think it is worth fighting. But it is not a struggle as, as jurists might think. Actually, it is a joint struggle. All of us need to fight for a different world. And so, I would like to invite you to listen to the struggle and to actively take part in it. Yes, but actually it is worthwhile mentioning or commenting on it. For we also have another question for Wolfgang Kalik. It is a difficult question or difficult reflection. The question is whether a file against uh, the uh, Spanish dictatorship crimes would be successful in the U in Germany to be carried out by Germany considering the principles of universal jurisdiction and whether you are we have considered John Dimitri Negroponte because of his activities in according to the law blah 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 well as for Frank's regime crimes I don't see many options in Germany because uh, you need to say that it is genocide and it is difficult because those prosecuted, well, it's a political group. And so German courts will not accept that definition uh, the way it was done here. So secondly, as for Negro Ponte, of all the war crimes committed in Iraq, we've chosen systematic torture because we thought it was a highly documented crime with documents coming from Bush administration, by the way. And so we've got good evidence uh, against the leading group there. So as for other war, crime, war crimes, many of them, that would be much more difficult. Uh, and we don't have the resources to cover it all. And Consolidating universal jurisdiction from the beginning? Well, it is not just about universal jurisdiction. It is about justice in the end. So, same as happens with universal justice and in the International Criminal Court and remedies, seeking remedies, well, get rid of double standards. And People need to forget uh, about their uh, alleged superiority. Is that possible? Is that possible? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. But listen, listen, hear me out. Well, first of all, we need to start the colonialism and its history. We cannot refer to Africa without mentioning colonialism, or uh, well, the same happens with uh, Latin America. So we need to get rid of the violations of human rights by our European companies working all over the world. It is not enough. It is not enough to bring to, to, to trial the savages in this.